Hey everybody, it's Claire. Welcome back for another Web Dev Wednesday. So today, if this site looks a little familiar, it's because we are doing a similar thing to we did last week. So last week we styled this as a navigation bar on the left side of our screen. Today we are styling it as a horizontal navigation bar along the top. Um, just a quick refresher here on our HTML document. The navigation menu is an unordered list where each list item is a link to what would be um, another page on the website. And there's a nested UL here in this list item of blog just for categories. So we are going to style a sublist as well. All right, and I have emptied out our CSS for this page. We are starting from scratch. I'm going to just start with a couple preliminary styles to make the site look a little bit better. I'm gonna text align center this. I'm going to get all of the unordered lists, not just the main one, but the little one as well. We're going to do list style none. And I'm also going to target all of the links on the page um, and do text decoration none to remove the underline. If we refresh the page, now you see we have our bare bones. All right. So remember over here, our big unordered list has an ID of nav. So I'm going to use that to target the menu as a whole. And we're going to target the list items within this unordered list. I'm going to give it a width of 19% and the percent is of the window. So 19% of whatever size the window is, which comes into play when you're viewing on a smaller screen or you're resizing your window. It doesn't get blocky. The page will adjust. Um, I'm just going to give them a little bit of a margin left as well just for a bit of spacing hopefully it will center it and here I'm using a new CSS property called float and what float does is it takes an element out of the flow of the document and moves it either to the left or the right here I'm telling it to go to the left so everything else is going to flow to the left of it as you'll see when I refresh this just means the list items floating left floating left floating left they aren't stacked on top of each other they're going to be horizontal. This doesn't look good yet. We'll get there. Okay, so now I'm going to target the links within those list items just to make them look a little bit better here. Let's give them a background color of, yeah, let's do dark blue, a text color of white. Um, I'm going to give them a little bit of padding just so it looks more like a button. Remember we did that last week and I'm going to style these again in percents just for restyling or re resizing purposes and here when I do two values this is top and bottom this is left and right and you can do up to four numbers here if you just do one it's all around all directions this is the sides the top and if you use four it's left right top bottom it's all of them but we're just going to do the top bottom and then the sides for a bit of a even size button here. Um, I'm going to do a text align center on these as well. Save that. We'll see how our progress is coming. That's pretty good. Let's, um, it's going to help if I do display block on these. I think that'll help with our spacing. There we go. So now the widths or the padding looks a bit better. And I'm also going to do a border radius. And I was actually mistaken in my last video. Um, I said border radius applies only when you already have a border. And that's not true. You can do a border radius just on a regular element and it will round the edges like that. Okay. So now I'm going to work on this ugly little sub menu here. That is not looking too good. So now I'm going to target the unordered list within the list item within the nav. And you'll see I use quite a lot of descendant selectors here, which we talked about in last week's video as well. Actually, I'm going to hold off on this. I think I'm going to target the list items in that sub menu first. Um, first of all, we got to remove the float. So they are a vertical one. I don't want another horizontal. I want this to be a drop down sort of a drop down sort of effect. Um, I'm going to give them a width of 100% and that's 100% of their container. So it's going to be 100% the width of this list item. That's a little bit better. Um, I'll give her a little margin too. We'll just do a 
So there's a little bit of spacing there. That looks much better. So now I'm going to get all the way in there into the link itself, the links within the list item of this submenu here. I'm just going to give it background color. Let's do something kind of, let's do cornflower blue. Save. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to set the display of that submenu to none. And remember this hides it so then we can do a hover effect that will show it. So now we don't have anything. But I want to target hovering a list item. So here we're going to do our navigation menu and a list item within it, hover. Um, and we're going to target a UL within a list item being hovered over and we'll change the display to block. So now when we come to the list item that has a nested UL, it comes block. And as a final touch, I'm just going to put in some hover styles for everything. So a hover, I think I can just do list item hover actually. So let's make the background color something nice and complimentary. Let's do dark slate blue. No, that's not what I wanted. I do want the link. Yep, so now that will change that. And let's these change color too. But if we wanted to do a different color for those, we would just do nav liul lia hover, I believe. Right, because this is the link within the list item, within the sub list inside the list item. I know it's a, lo a lot of descendants there, but this is how you're getting really specific in your selectors. So for this, let's give it a background color of black and see how this looks. There we go. There's our functioning horizontal menu. And as you can see, they resize because we use percents as our units. All right, I think that's it for this week, you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe for future Web Dev Wednesday videos. I will see you all next time.